Welcome back. The title of this mini lecture is Abraham Lincoln's Assassination. Let's get into it. All right. <laughs> Lincoln history is a fascinating thing, and it's one of the most popular things for a historian of the 19th century and the Civil War in particular to get into because of this fascination and interest. Now, some of this is because of, again, the Civil War. Some of this is because of the connections to Illinois. Some of this is because of the assassination. Lincoln wasn't entirely beloved within his own time, even by individuals within the United States, as opposed to the Confederacy. But after his death and after that, the, the manner in which he died, uh, he became someone who, um, you know, our imaginations have, have often and always turned to Lincoln. Now, First off, we need to put sort of the, the conspiracies around the assassination out of our minds. So let's get into them. First one. Uh, so I typically will hear this one that uh, the Lincoln and Kennedy assassination are linked in some way because a number of individuals surrounding the Lincoln assassination have a name of Kennedy and a number of individuals surrounding the Kennedy assassination have the name of Lincoln. Whether they do or not, who cares? Okay, it doesn't really matter. Secondly, the, the more common thing that I'll hear for folks is that uh, John Wilkes Booth, the guy who assassinated Lincoln, never died, uh, that he, he escaped uh, and, you know, ended up living his life out, you know, in Texas or somewhere or other. He didn't, but, you know, if he had, it still wouldn't have changed the fact that Lincoln was in fact assassinated. Third, a commonly assumed myth surrounding the Lincoln assassination was that Lincoln was going to die anyway soon after the time that he was assassinated, that he had something called Marfan syndrome, and that this was going to kill him, this was going to take his life within a few months. No, Lincoln did not have Marfan syndrome. A man whose name was Lincoln in the decades after President Lincoln was assassinated was treated by a physician and he had Marfan syndrome. That physician then wrote up a paper that said that, well, obviously then, since a guy named Lincoln has Marfan syndrome, President Lincoln must have had Marfan syndrome. No, he didn't. All right. What do we know as far as the Lincoln assassination is concerned? By the end of 1864, early 1865, you start to get a number of conspirators who want to, in the last days of the Confederacy, take a, a drastic action against leaders of the United States. They want to attempt to assassinate not only Lincoln, but other members of his cabinet as well. These individuals, some of them are Confederate soldiers uh, or connected in some way to Virginia militia or other kinds of things. So we're talking John Wilkes Booth, we're talking Lewis Powell, we're talking George Atzerodt, and certainly Mary Surratt is going to be a part of this too. They attempt to put this plan into effect, and they do so in April of 1865. Now, Lincoln usually traveled relatively unguarded. You could, in the 1860s, walk into the White House and just try to get a meeting with the president. But the idea that a president would need to have that kind of personal protection that they do today was just something that wasn't particularly anticipated. The assumption was that nobody would do that. Uh, you know, nobody would want to do that. Even though uh, a president they attempted to assassinate, uh, you know, Andrew Jackson, he was the first president that anybody had ever tried to assassinate. Now, Booth was an actor, so he had connections at the theater, and Lincoln loved the theater. He adored it. So again, Lincoln is someone who doesn't like to have a lot of personal protection. He's going to be at a theater. He was supposed to be at Ford's Theater, not necessarily with who he was with, but he was supposed to be there with uh, General Ulysses S. Grant and Grant's wife. Uh, but he's not. He's there with another major, uh, Major Rathbone and his wife, uh, and then his wife, Mary Todd. Uh, now, they're in their private box. Booth enters uh, into the hallway. And since Grant's not there, right, you wouldn't have the, uh, uh, the number of officers who would have been milling about since they're at war. Uh, there would have been one guard, and that guard went downstairs to have a drink, and he stayed. So Booth enters into the the, uh, the 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 box. He shoots Lincoln once in the back of the head. He strikes at Major Rathbone, jumps onto the stage, breaks his leg, and runs off. Now, in some sources he said, six semper tyrannis, or thus always to tyrants. Others he doesn't. Either way, what do we know? Booth shoots Lincoln in the back of the head. Lincoln slumps forward. 
Lincoln is taken across the street to a boarding house where he dies just before 7.30 the next morning. We know that Booth was treated by a doctor whose last name was Mud. So if you've ever heard the phrase, your name is Mud, it was intended as a slur. Uh, this was because of this. Now, Mud was a Confederate sympathizer. This is why Booth went to him specifically. Uh, and what else do we know? We know that the other conspirators do not succeed in killing any of the other cabinet officials. One or two are wounded, but that's it. Some of them are caught, put on trial, and executed. Booth is caught in a barn a few weeks later in a very large manhunt, at the point the largest in American history. Uh, he's shot in the neck and the barn is burned, uh, and so Booth dies uh, in the barn. Uh, the trial after this process, or the trials after this process, uh, were seen by some as sort of railroading, you know, kind of going too quickly, uh, with the assumption being that the public wanted justice right at the, as the war ended. And they're controversial as well, partly because Mary Surratt, the, the mother of one of these individuals, uh, is also put on trial here, and she's found guilty, and she is executed. She's the first woman the federal government executes. Uh, and the assumption was that she was sort of guilty by association, that she wasn't really guilty. Uh, if you watch the more modern film, The Conspirators, this is the, kind of the thing that they try to show. They try to say that, oh, no, no, she wasn't actually guilty. But uh, the evidence is there that she was uh, she was guilty. She had knowledge of the, the attacks that were going to happen. Now, uh, the conspirators film itself, uh, most, you know, it's more of a commentary on the Iraq war era, you know, that kind of thing. It's not historically accurate. Uh, overall, though, right, Booth's action, uh, right, sort of transforms some of the, the national conversation around the post-war era, uh, the image and that what we understand of Lincoln uh, and how we kind of think about assassinations, because Lincoln's body is eventually brought back. Uh, there are these massive trains that carry it all over the country. Uh, millions show up, you know, come out to, to see it. Uh, and even when it's buried, there was a, a plot in the 1870s to try to kidnap Lincoln's body. Uh, and there was kind of an association of men who you know, created to, to try to protect the president. Uh, so it's a fascinating pro process and part of the American story. All right. Thanks so much.